what's up? Ken from Palm Beach Dino here. I'm driving our 2020 GT500. International Raceway right now. Um, you may have seen uh, we just recently posted Lee Dennis's uh, new best of 9.70 at 144 with his 2020 GT500. That uh, car has the mod list of a 2.5 bully, uh, injector dynamics, uh, 1050X injectors, uh, lethal track exhaust, uh, a K2 filter, and E85 fuel. And, uh, you know, that's not really a big list and obviously a, an amazing performance, but uh, obviously not everybody's going to go that far. Not everybody wants to run E85, not everybody wants to change their pulley, uh, but they want to get more performance out of it. So that's what we're going to try today. Um, so real quick, we'll go over this car. Uh, right now, it's stock plus a little bit of weight reduction with these seats. Um, Mickey Thompson drag radial tires so we can get uh, consistent results and not be fighting traction and um, a lethal resonator delete. I did not anticipate that that would pick up power when uh, we decided to test it on the vehicle but it actually did. Uh, if you watch the lethal video there's some dyno information in there and I think it picked up. You know every pull is different but we did three pulls uh, without it and three pulls with it and it did pick up power so we're gonna call it five horsepower. So those are the differences from a stock vehicle. This car does currently have a tune on it, but we'll return it back to stock when we get to the track, make a hit in drag mode pretty much exactly like everybody would normally drive this vehicle. Then we'll put our standard 93 octane tune on it and then do another hit in drag mode. Then I have uh, some things that I found on Lee Dennis's car to improve a 60 foot and I wanna see if it applies to this vehicle at stock boost. So we'll do all that. Then there's a lot more testing we're gonna do. We're gonna do MS109 fuel. I'm gonna discuss the different modes. Uh, do you always use drag mode? Should you manually shift? When should you manually shift? All these sorts of things. And uh, where we stand today on transmission, uh, where we hope to get, and all those sorts of things. But anyway, we'll cover each one of those topics as, uh, as we come across it. So uh, let's go ahead and just see what it does on a bone stock tune. Uh, with the modifications that I mentioned. Okay, hopefully you guys can hear me pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and run the car. Um, the car is on the stock tune, and I am going to uh, run it in drag mode at 3200. Because we have the Mickey Thompson drag radio on it, I figure we'll go right to 3200. If we happen to spin, I'll back it off a little bit, but I don't really suspect that. Okay, let's talk about the uh, lights on the dash real quick. We've got obviously tire pressure light because we've only got 20 PSI in the tires, which is where we're gonna start with these. The airbag light is on because the seat is unplugged. And so this right here in the uh, manual, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a lightning bolt above the temperature gauge. And um, that's, gonna, that's your emergency brake light, but it's also uh, seems to come on when the airbags are unplugged and for a few other reasons that we have not determined yet. Anyway, I'm driving around the water box because when we were running Lee's car, we were having issues with uh, getting uh, water on the front, too much water on the front tires.
was our basic 93 tune. Um, I won't know the exact ET till we get back. That felt pretty good. Um, that was a 17160 foot. They show it up on the uh, up on the time uh, tower uh, when you launch, at least in testing. Um, the drag, he says, I went roughly a 107. It's not showing me the other digit, so that may be a 106. So uh, let's check out what the time slip looks like. Okay, I got the time slip. Let's go over that real quick. Um, 17160 foot, uh, not great, but pretty typical for you know the car the way it's set up. And 1066 at 132. Now keep in mind, uh, you know we're in South Florida. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and look up the density altitude for this and uh, put that up on the screen. Um, but beyond density altitude, it's very humid here in South Florida. So that's another factor, but uh, I'm real happy with that. Um, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna make one little change uh, that I believe will help the 60 foot. So um, it may or may not help. It helped Lee Dennis pick up practically a 10th in the 60 foot. So we'll go ahead and uh, apply that tune change and uh, see what it does for us. Okay, on this one, we're doing everything the same as far as the driver goes. I just made some differences, changes in the tune that I'm hoping will pick us up as much as a 10th in the 60 foot. Or it may do nothing at all. We're about to find out. There you go guys i got the clutch over temp there i wasn't on the two-step very long at all so uh i think that happened on lee's car because it did the same thing and i didn't notice it so what i'm going to do is shut it off and take a closer look did it again I didn't shut it off so I'll go cool it off and see what happens not having a whole lot of luck today guys all right everybody <laughs> hopefully this works if I get the same code, then maybe it's something I changed in the tune. Let's see what happens. Okay, I didn't see what the drag he said. At least it made a pass. <laughs> the uh, 60 foot was slightly better, it looked like, but not a ton better. So maybe that trick I got is just applicable to the, um, you know, as we go up and boost and it starts limiting torque. So uh, we'll take a look at the time slip uh, closer in just a second. Okay, slightly better on the 60 foot. Let's compare them. Uh, a 171 to a 169. Um, and other than that, you know, 600s at the big end. So I would say that change I made was not really relevant. So maybe it's just, you know, help more helpful at the higher boost cars or uh, whatever. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I think that's pretty good uh, ET for this weather with just a tune. 1060 uh, at 132. Um, I'm sure if I ran it again and played with it a little bit, we might be able to get in the 50s. And like I said, it's in the seven, it's 70 degrees out, 76 degrees out right now. And um, 
you know, it's getting warmer. It's uh, almost 90 grains of water in the air, which, you know, like 90% humidity. So uh, we're gonna call that good for this. So now what we're gonna do is put the MS-109 in the tank. Or actually, you know what, we're gonna do one more. On the faster cars, what we've done is manually shift the car in track mode so we can have higher shift points and we've picked up some ET. So since we hit exactly 10.60, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do that right now. And, um, you know, hopefully we can get it in the 50s with just that one change. Okay, we're all set up. Uh, I didn't even shut the car off. We're gonna put it in uh, track mode instead of drag mode. And we're going to uh, leave traction control off and see what happens. Launch control not available. What that means is, is you'll, you'll still get RPM, but we're not gonna get um, any kind of traction control on this one. And I need to put it in manual mode, I almost forgot. And we're gonna shift this at closest to 8,000 as we can. Okay, I got the clutch thing again. So, uh, I don't know. I guess I gotta let it cool off. Well, you know, sometimes things don't always go as planned, but you learn something, and hopefully we learn something from this uh, track rental because things aren't going super smooth. Um, what we've seen, and what you've seen, is uh, we're getting the uh, uh, clutch over temp problem uh, that a lot of people have seen. Now, it's I haven't stayed on the two-step long at all like literally let it hit once or twice and then go and uh, it has a problem now when it did it earlier I was at the same temperature above 170 trans oil temp and uh, it did it so then I drove it around a little bit got it down into the 160s and uh, it seemed to be fine I suppose um, but uh, you know this is a problem maybe uh, you know we we're all happy about being able to hot lap these cars but right now um, it's not it's hot I mean I'm you know humid like crazy but it's not so bad that you know you normally wouldn't be racing it's only 77 degrees out right now so right now you know the other problem is it looks like the trans doesn't really cool off very much uh, you know at slower speeds so maybe there's something there maybe we need to look further into trans cooling maybe this particular car has some issues but uh, the trans temp isn't going up driving it right now but it certainly isn't going down too much it's dropped a few degrees so I'll try to pick the speed up here since it's a rental I could go a little faster back here but really shouldn't do that at a track anyway I'm gonna play with it a little bit and hopefully we can make another pass all right <clears throat> we're gonna try this again Temps are down to 158, which isn't too cool, but <clears throat> we don't have all day. Okay, we're in manual mode and we're going for it. See what happens. Hopefully the transmission behaves. Okay, I wasn't uh, running the draggy on that one, so I have no idea how good I did. The 60 foot was pretty typical uh, in the 1.7 range, so uh, let's take a look at the slip once we get up here. Okay, there we go, uh, a little bit better. I'm comparing that to the last pass, which was a 1.69 60 foot. This was a 1.70, but it picked up uh, exactly three hundredths of a second, and just short of two mile an hour. And the only difference between those two tunes 
was running it in track mode but uh, manually shifting it as close to 8,000 as I could. So anyway, we're gonna call that good for the 93 tune. Obviously, we'll be doing a lot more of this on other vehicles in this vehicle, um, but we wanna move on and make a little bit more power. So what we're gonna do right now, uh, and since it does best in a manually shifted track mode, we're gonna stick with that the rest of the, the day. We've got a couple more hours here. We're putting a MS-109 in. I'm gonna go ahead and load a uh, race tune for that, and then uh, see what kind of improvements we get. make sure everything looked good after I made that first shift manually shifting it even though you're not using a clutch uh, you still got to pay attention so uh, hopefully that was a lot better I'm hoping for uh, at least a mile an hour or two and uh, I don't know a couple tenths let's see okay I couldn't wait to get back the draggy saying uh, I'm not running video my, my phone isn't doing the video properly so I'll put these screenshots up if you guys want to see the draggy. Um, but it says 1049 at 137. The 137 has my attention. So uh, we're gonna head back over here and see what Tom slips up. Okay, well, the draggy was very inaccurate there. Uh, the problem was the 60 foot. It did feel bad. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, so we'll just try it again. The cool part was 137 miles an hour, so um, uh, I'll look over the log and see what may have happened and see if we have to make any changes, but most likely we'll just uh, make another run. So. Okay, I just reviewed the log and I figured out what the problem is already. Um, I, uh, since Lee was running on uh, E85 and run MS-109, I wanted to start with his uh, timing curves and uh, we had some power pulled out of his car to leave properly with the pulley and the, uh, and the high boost and my car did not like the uh, low power there out of the hole with the 1860 foot. So I'll make a quick change to that and we'll make another hit. saw there it bucked pretty hard off the line um, that's torque control 100% uh, I have some things I'm gonna try to get around it like I did on Lee's car uh, 1076 at 137 so mile an hour is there that's 137 with just uh, race gas uh, shifting it manually that's that's pretty good um, I'm not really leaning on it very hard Could probably lean on it a little harder with timing and all that but uh, right now we got to make a clean pass before we really try to push any more power so uh, I just went ahead and made a, a little bit of a change to the tune and uh, we're gonna go ahead and head up and see what it does this time. best uh 172 60 foot not great um 1046 at 136.9 so it's been very consistent on the trap speed um we're gonna try one more get a little bit more 60 foot out of it hopefully uh i'm just hoping for you know to get this thing solidly in the mid to low 16s but you know it is what it is one thing that we have learned is after a flash sometimes 
things aren't happy, you might have to go take it for a drive. Or, uh, this last pass line locker wouldn't work. And I tried putting the old tune back on. Maybe that was it. Nothing would work. And I just drove it for a minute or two and then it came back on. So anyway, just something uh, you gotta, we're gonna have to deal with when uh, on these new applications, maybe we can get it to not do that after a flash. But uh, if you're flashing the car at the track, it might be a good idea to flash it and then drive it for a little bit before you go make a pass. So we're just gonna let it cool off and run the same exact tune and see if we can improve it all and then uh, go from there. I'm pretty happy with that 10:42 at 136.58 it's getting pretty uh nasty out here looks like it's getting ready to rain i'll go ahead and throw the uh weather conditions from air density online up over this video i haven't even looked at them yet um very humid 170 560 foot 10:42 at 136 um 108 miles an hour in the eighth mile that's pretty good obviously we still have a lot of work to do here but i'm pretty happy with that that's ms 109 um and then uh, we still have the lid on the stock air box. I wanted to leave everything as stock as possible, except for, of course for the lethal uh, um, resonator delete, which, you know, I did that to, uh, so we could test it and get to do a video for you guys. I wanted to leave the car stock, but that added a few horsepower. It's not nothing significant. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you know, of course, once we can run the car in drag mode and allow it to shift itself at 8,000, I think it will be much quicker. Uh, a, the suspension is gonna be set up a little bit better and B, um, it's gonna cut less power between the gears and all that kind of stuff, the over torque shifting. We're missing out on that right now, but the gains by shifting at 8,000 over 72 to 74 where the stock car shifts is worth um, you know, the sacrifice we're making on the, sh on the shifts, uh, between shifts, power being pulled, and possibly on launch. So anyway, we're gonna call that good. And uh, you know, stay tuned to this channel, stay tuned to Drag Times, that racing channel, Stang Mode, uh, you know, we've got tons of uh, YouTube guys doing all kinds of videos on our stuff, you know, so watch out for those cars coming soon. And um, we're also going to uh, have another track rental in about a week with drag times. Uh, so if there's any stock 20, G 20 GT 500s out there that want to get involved in these videos, we really need somebody. Um, I'm not going to say the date because I don't want people to show up at the track, but just message us and it's about a week from now and a uh, week, week and a half and uh, it's a rental for drag times and we need a stock 2020 GT500 and then I'll be doing a little bit more to this and you know, I'm hoping that in really good weather we can possibly run um, a 999 on a, on a stock pulley. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do in the 60 foot. We've got a lot of work in other areas. I'm going to lighten the car a little bit more, uh, but I think we could do it in really good weather. So good first day at the track. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, hit like on this video, the bell, share it. Please help us build this channel. We're trying our best to bring you the best content out there, uh, but we need a lot of people watching it. So tell all your friends about us. Later.